Hey guys, Dan here, and today I have an Illustrator tutorial for you on how to create this logo. This tutorial is based at beginners um, because I am actually a, a beginner myself, really. Because I've only been learning this program about two weeks now, maybe a little bit longer. I have used it in the past, but I've never actually, you know, learned, you know, gone watch tutorials and, you know, actually spent time making things in Illustrator. But I have recently, like my logo and I've made a few logos for some other people, some mates and things, so if you're a bit more advanced in Illustrator you might find this tutorial just, you might not learn anything, uh, you might even find it frustrating because I might be doing things a bit more awkwardly because <laughs> I don't know all the tools and that, but yeah, if you are a bit more advanced, uh, comment uh, feedbacks in the comments uh, would be uh, much appreciated. So we're going to show you how to create this, and uh, this is really simple, even beginner probably follow along um, it doesn't use anything too technical or anything like that and uh, create a new document you basically just go file new um, if you know Photoshop then you kind of know Illustrator interface wise um, a lot of things look similar and do similar things but they just have way more options and they just work slightly different um, a new document basically you can do pixels like you do in Photoshop um, the actual document isn't in pixels but it's just um, the measurements in pixels. So for this, I'm just going to use a thousand by thousand. And the reason five by five is there is um, don't do anything too too small. Um, I know this is Illustrator and it it works on vectors, so things can be scaled up infinitely and down infinitely. But if you create something in a document that is so small already, you're not going to be able to add detail. Something like a five by five pixel, um, a box with a stroke of one point around it pretty much fills the whole thing and um, it, it just doesn't make sense so as long as you use something reasonable 500 by 500 a thousand by a thousand pixels if you don't want to use pixels you can use anything you want but I use pixels because um, I know how big pixels are on my screen so I know that a thousand by a thousand when I have this at a hundred percent view so it's basically uh, the perfect view how it looked would look um, it pretty much just fits the screen and it fills the screen for me so and plus this is a squarish logo, it's a circle but obviously it fits inside a square so hence why I'm using the square uh, document for this so to get started we are going to go view show grid this just gives us something to align our shapes with make sure everything's uh, what's the word I'm looking for, make sure everything's lined up and symmetrical and we're also going to snap to grid to help us with that as well and we're going to go to our shape tool and we're going to hit we want the ellipse tool and you can hit L if you like using shortcuts and now what we're going to do is we're going to find the center looks here to me that is the center yep and then we're going to hold shift alt and we're going to click out and you'll notice it snaps to the grid you can, you'll, you'll feel that if you're using if you're in Illustrator you'll you'll feel it snapping and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to drag it to the uh, but if you're using a thousand by thousand, basically one big grid square in, um, and then we, what we're going to do is we're going to make the fill none and the outline black by one point. This is just because we don't need it filled, and we're only using the outline of the circles to create shapes here. So we're then going to copy and paste this by hitting Control C for copy and Control F for paste in front. You can hit V if you want, but paste in front just does what it says, it pastes the shape in front on the layers um, every time for you. And then we're going to hit Alt and can Shift again. Uh, and this is basically how, where you pick how thick you want your uh, your little banana shapes to be. Uh, this one was about two grids worth. I actually like the look of one. So for this example, I'm going to do one. You could do even less. If you made this on a bigger screen or you wasn't using the grid and you were just doing it by eye you could make this like that and have really thick uh, banana shapes but I really like the look of the thinner ones so now once we have that we've picked how thick we want it we can then just drag this over until the uh, smaller circle edges uh, touch the bigger circle edges and then we're going to do this for every uh, side we're going to do left top uh, right left up bottom up I said bottom really posh. Um, control paste again, and we're just going to drag this, make sure it's aligned uh, vertically, 
and horizontally for whichever way round you do it. I always go from right, top, left, bottom. I said bottom that time properly. <laughs> uh, and then, oh, I'm just going to move that one. You'll notice you get a little dot in the middle. Make sure this is just centered if your thing moves. You could probably use the arrow keys as well. Maybe it might be a bit easier for you moving it about. And then you'll get something like this once you've done that. And if you look closely, you can actually kind of see where these shapes come from uh, within this. And basically, we're just going to use this to create our shapes. This is basically just a template which we're going to cut our shapes out of. And we're going to do this using the Shape Builder tool. Before we can even do anything with that, we're going to have to hit Control A to select all. And you'll notice now we can actually click things and we get this kind of this uh, pattern that shows up. And basically, when we click there now, this makes that will turn that into a shape once I click. You'll notice you'll get some more points that show up and things like that. But we can also join things together to make uh, to make shapes. And we're basically just going to make these banana shapes. And how it's done um, is from this one of the small ones in the corners. We then go into the shape to the right of it, and then we go uh, down. We don't go into the smaller one, and then we go down again. So we're basically going from the inside to the outside. And once you've done one, it's really easy to do the rest. Oh, just hit Control Z if you mess up to go back, and you'll notice uh, we basically have an outline of our of what it's going to look like already. So now we're going to fill these by going on either select tool. Doesn't really matter; they both work the same. Just make sure you click on the outside because there's a weird shape that we've made on the inside, which you'll see at the end. It'll just be a black outline. Uh, we're going to delete that at the end. So we're just going to fill in our main shapes here. And we're just going to flip the fill and stroke and then change the color. Going to make a red. I always go red, green, uh, no, red, blue, green, yellow. Don't know why, it just looks cool. I think it's because it kind of looks like the uh, chrome logo a little bit. Wrong shape. Make sure we do it down here. Oops. We don't want an outline on these, so we don't want a stroke. So make sure the stroke is none. Um, what was we going for? Green. Green. And then a yellow. And then once we've done that, you'll notice this weird shape in the middle I was on about. As you can see, there's this black outline in the middle. Um, this is just from our, basically our shapes we made earlier. There's a line there as well, actually. But you'll get some of these weird shapes and we can just get rid of these simply by selecting holding shift and clicking all of our main areas our th four main blocks of color moving them over off the document selecting the whole document by clicking and dragging and then hitting delete then we can hit control a because we've got no uh, we just want this back here and we can just click and drag and now we've got this and you'll notice on this one I have a, a gap in between each shape um, I cheated with this one. Basically, this is a stroke. It's not actually a gap. And as you can see, it kind of looks, in my opinion, crap once you add anything other than white behind it. But this can be done properly with cutting these shapes out. So this is done by, uh, we're just going to select all. So hit Control A. And we're going to go to Path, I mean Object. And then we're going to go to Path. And then we're going to go to Offset Path. And then we're going to offset the path by minus five pixels because the stroke in the example was five pixels um, that's I think that's technically ten because it will be either side so this shape will come in minus five and the other shape will go in minus five so the actual gap in between will be uh, ten pixels but uh, it looks really good like this so we're just going to hit enter and what that's going to do is it's actually instead of just applying it to what we have it's just going to make a it's going to duplicate that then apply the offset so now what we need to do is delete the the uh, the bigger the bigger ones, the original uh, shapes, and they should be at the. If you notice in your layers, if you don't have layers, you go to Window Layers, um, open that up, and you should notice there's two of each shape now. Uh, the bottom shape should be the one that's the big, big, uh, big one we want to delete. So hold and shift and click in the circles. We're going to select each bottom one and then hit delete, and there you go. You've got the same effect but 
it actually works with uh, things behind it like so if we add a shape and send it to the back there you go you can actually see there's actually a gap in between them um, so you might not even want the gap so you can actually ditch that part um, like I said you can do various things to this to make it look different and last but not least what we can do to this is if we select all hit ctrl G to group it we can go to effect and then warp and then select either one of these and then you obviously get all of the shape in the style tab you can select any of the ones you just saw in the warp thing and you can do things to it you can basically just warp this to whatever you're looking for now the one I like is inflate either way uh, you go all the way to the left which makes that it's pretty cool if you go all the way to the right it makes that you might need to scale that down uh, I like that one I'm gonna roll with that if we want this smaller you'll notice even though you've warped something the paths stay default to what the shape was before you warp it so it may get a bit confusing when you're trying to select something up here and it keeps selecting something in the middle but uh, yeah I think you can delete the paths I'm not 100% sure this is where my inexperience comes in I don't know how to sort that out so it's just these uh, even if there is a way but yeah now we got this this different shape I think, I think it actually looks pretty cooler um, and basically the only thing we can really do to this now is add gradients instead of our own colors and that's done by if we go to the direct select tool now because obviously we've grouped this so uh, whenever we select a box it's going to select the whole thing so with the direct select tool it should if we click up here so yeah you notice if I try and click the red bit because that's not where actually the path is it just selects all of it uh, you can ungroup it if you wanted to but it probably still wouldn't select anything um, but we remember the red one was this one here inside our old shape so we're just going to click that and then or well, you could also go into layers and select it you can have, obviously see them in the little mini preview boxes you can see which one you want so we're going to go to red and we're going to change this to a red gradient so uh, when that's selected we go to window gradient and you'll get this box here if you open it up and if you click this bit here it should activate the gradient and then we can add the colors to the gradient uh, just like Photoshop really and we're just going to go from red to a darker red and then you can obviously add more make it reflected uh, radial uh, what I like to do is then hit the gradient tool and you'll notice you'll get this bar you can then edit the gradient um, to your liking so with this design I'd probably like it from going from really bright to dark at the bottom so if we just do this get the edge there and go like that and I don't like it having too much dark though so I'm gonna move this down a bit something like that, that looks pretty cool and then we could do that for each shape and then you get something that looks different um, you could also add like uh, like glossy lines and shadows and all that kind of things to make it look really make it kind of look 3D-ish if you added like a line in the middle and kind of made it look like it was uh, embeveled on the top like it was a 3D object um, you could even make this 3D, I'm not 100% sure so if we were to select this now and make it 3D I have no idea what would happen it's quite funny, let's have a look I don't even know if anything would happen <laughs> kinda works to a degree um, but uh, you probably get these weird white lines that can sometimes show up doesn't really work too well but I guess that's something you could do to the original and then warp it we go back sorry about the button bash now I have a mechanical keyboard if you're wondering why it's so loud right so we got this if we group this again oh hit the wrong button and we go to 3d extrude and bevel front uh, I mean where's front front lift this up a little bit about 10 degrees and we add that here we get like a cool 3d look that looks pretty cool at the moment and then if we try and warp that will that work better what do we use? Squeeze. No, we used inflate, didn't we? Yeah, there you go. And then you've kind of got a 3D version of this logo. Doesn't really work. You probably need a big gap in between. But yeah, see, there's so many things you can do to this. Um, so, yeah, have experiments, see what you can come up with. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video, dislike it if you disliked it. Um, any uh, comments about 
improvements to the video to uh, me and Illustrator <laughs> uh, will be greatly appreciated and thanks for watching. Peace.